one. And certainly for the Creighton Blue Jays, they've got some work to do, but they've got a talented trio, including Jalen Agnew, Sidney Lamberty, and Audrey Faber. On the other side for the Iowa Hawkeyes, in addition to Gustafson, Kathleen Doyle, who's taken over the point guard duties, the sophomore, has done a masterful job for Lisa Breeder in her second season. And if we're talking about Creighton, who had the first possession, their number one key to the game is stopping Megan Gustafson. Now the question is, sometimes Coach mentioned, hey, when she scores a lot, they tend to lose. So you gotta gamble, all or nothing. And right there, they go to number 10 in white, and Megan Gustafson, she scores the first two points of the game. Now on the flip side for Iowa, the keys to the game, three-point defense versus Creighton. Everyone on the court is a shooter. And also, who else will step up? That's a big question for the Blue Jays. And Audrey Faber has done an excellent job all season long helping to carry this Creighton group. Not surprised to see her get on the board first for her team because she's very competitive. She's an intense player. So this means a lot, the opportunity today. Hawkeyes 24 and seven on the season. We finished tied for third in the Big Ten. And as we saw in that first game with UCLA and American, these teams, especially for the Bruins, hadn't played since March 3rd. The same goes for the Iowa Hawkeyes as well. And Monique Billings was very she talked about upfront it. about it and said, yeah, we got a little rust there. There's a little adversity plus rust, but the good teams emerge. They use it to their benefit. Billy Norby thought about it. Instead, Sidney Lamberty, excuse me, Maya Melman over to Faber. And Faber going right at Chase Coley, one of the seniors for the Hawkeyes. Jim Flannery in his 16th season with his alma mater, graduated back in 1987. And he said, look, let's be honest here. We are a team that were among the last four. We just snuck into the tournament, but he is representing the Big East, one of four teams coming out of that conference. And these coaches know each other. They know each other inside and out. Talking about the scrimmage that they have uh, starting every year, it's really interesting. It's a closed scrimmage, but it's, it's a good measuring stick. And so Lisa Bluter, as you mentioned, very familiar with this Creighton group, and she has reached the tournament 12 times in her 18 years with the Hawkeyes, but was admittedly disappointed in the last two years because they had come up short after making eight straight tournament appearances. But she said this year, the group came back and they just remained so positive, and that's been the difference. It has. There's been injuries. Players have been in and out of lineups. But nonetheless, they've maintained that standard that allows them to be here today. And so you talked about that relationship between between these two coaches. <laughs> Break it down, Tiffany. I think it's most interesting, not only for that scrimmage that you mentioned at the beginning of the season, seven Creighton players along with the manager were stuck inside an elevator for more than an hour <laughs> before they could even play the game. So Coach Flannery said, I had to call. Coach Bluter and say, look, can we can we push the game back just a little bit? We have a dilemma. Now the gag is though, those players all shot the ball well. <laughs> so you're like, oh, did, did, was this good for team bonding? And Bailey Norby getting on the board, and that's a welcome sign for the senior out of Forest Lake, Minnesota, who averages just about three points a game. That shot forced up by Hannah Stewart, and the ball will remain with the Hawkeyes. Kathleen Doyle taking it out underneath the basket. Screen the screen on the baseline. Trying to get Megan the ball. Into Gustafson, the lefty. Can't get it to fall. But she read the defense well. If she dribbled, she would attack a double team. Instead, she just turned a nice little shot. This great group, 18 and 12 on the season, finished fourth in the Big East before taking an exit in the tournament semifinals to Marquette back on March 5th. Now this is triangle offense. I know a lot about triangle offense. We ran it at Stanford as we see a bucket go in by Hannah Stewart. But what they do is you can run triangle against man-to-man -man and you can run it against zone. And right there it works because you move the corner defender and allows for cross movement. And then next thing you know, the defense in the zone is out of place. And you have a wide open look on the block, on the block close to the basket. And in the corner is Jalen Agnew. 
And the sophomore out of Andover, Kansas, drains the three. All Big East second team selection following up a wonderful season in her freshman campaign when she was the Big East freshman of the year. That bounces in for the Hawkeyes. And that's something that you brought up, Janae, and I'm glad that you did in terms of triangle offense because it's something that I, I'm interested in keeping track of all throughout the game. Why do you think Lisa, Lisa Bieber decided to go with that triangle offense? So there's a lot of motion offense, a lot of chin offense, which means a lot of movement on the perimeter, but triangle, when you have a good post, that's the best motion offense for you. So it creates separation, high-low basketball, and it creates those one-on-one -on -one opportunities as we see Gustafson get a basket. So from there, there's a weak, there, right there, there was a weak side overload, which meant the help would either let her score or they'd give up a three on the weak side. Makes the basketball very, very simple. But the thing is, it's hard to learn. So if your team knows it, you guys have, will have great looks, whether inside or out. And on the outside is Audrey Faber out of Clive, Iowa. One of three Iowa natives as Gustafson comes right back. Now that will be interesting to track. The threes versus the twos. You can get Gustafson's twos, but how will you handle Creighton's threes? Because right now they're up one. Now that's a concern that Bluter shared with us on yesterday in the practices as Agnew drops down her second trifecta. She says, look, Creighton is an excellent three-point shooting team. And that's what I'm really most concerned about when I'm taking a look at the Blue Jays and scouting this group. And Hannah Stewart was called. I'm a little surprised the there. Of, yeah, because it seemed like she set a screen and, and someone busted through her screen, but she got called with the foul. See, you know what, Post, it's a hard life for Post. <laughs> it's a hard life for Post. Set a screen. Maybe the pressure, uh, maybe it was in her, you know, head area, the screen. Surprised her, cut her off guard. Either way. <laughs> we go the other way. <laughs> the ball belongs to the Creighton Blue Jays, who are three of five from beyond the arc. First time again, corner option fake. Overload on the opposite side, one on one for Gustafson or sagging in off the corner. Blair screen up top, hard to guard. Working on Allie Green and a three second violation called on the Hawkeyes. So the three pointer is holding true for the Creighton Blue Jays as they're up by four. Here in the first quarter, Jalen Agnew and Audrey Faber both combined for. Six of the 14, excuse me, six points apiece, 12 of the 14 points for the Blue Jays. And those are the ones that they're looking to to do most of the damage, so that's a good start. Gustafson on the other end also has six. Kathleen Doyle lets it fly, pops in and out, Faber with the rebound. Both teams shooting particularly well, better than 55%. Nice little pin down screen. And there's Gustafson crashing in for the board, the 6'3 junior out of Fort Wayne, Wisconsin. And here's a triangle post high low flare overload. I remember that, it's a mouthful. Gustafson and her defender fell down, and that was an easy two. There you, you see the overload. You have to keep the defense honest. And then a lucky strike, a lucky break in the paint. And over and back from Creighton. Well, it's interesting because Megan Gustafson was voted the Big Ten Player of the Year by the media while the coaches selected Kelsey Mitchell out of Ohio State. Her Buckeyes went on to advance and she's still third in the NCAA all-time scoring list. She is closing in on Jackie Styles. It's interesting. We've had two excellent Kelseys in back-to-back -back years in the NCAA women's competition. Well played, but for Gustafson, 
You know, she's a player that, while she's an All-American and voted by that, by that, my ad, by several outlets, excuse me, is that she still doesn't seem to get the same fanfare, perhaps, as some of the other bigs across the country. You have Kalani Brown out of Baylor, Asia Wilson from South Carolina. Uh, Cal's Christina Nigwe, I thought, also got a lot of attention as well, Ruthie Hebert. It's a quiet dominance, but I will tell you, the only attention she needs is from Pro Scouts, and she got that, so <laughs> she <all right. laughs> But I do think Kelsey Mitchell, the ability for her to score anywhere on the court, her three-point shot, that's the loudness in her game, even though she's a very quiet person. Now, Megan, I know she cares about winning, mm -hmm. and her teammates making her look good. And her teammates are very unselfish in that regard. I like it because, interestingly enough, her coaches always say that she just never takes a playoff. I mean, she's just a player that continues to go, go, go. And it's interesting because you talk about this Big Ten, and the Big Ten has never had a shortage of offense. Maybe defense, <laughs> but never a shortage of offense. And Kelsey Mitchell has really blossomed into one of the greatest scorers of all time. Jackie Styles obviously got her record stolen from her by Kelsey Plum. But Mitchell, I really believe she had a chance to not only catch Plum if she averaged about like 40, and I believed it. Now, she only had 11 points, I believe, in her first game. But that was, you know, those tend to be flukes. But um, I think one thing with Kelsey is she tends to be unselfish, even though she can score and is able to score. As long as they win, that's what matters. And that's the same thing for Megan Gustafson as well. Big numbers, but wins matter most. It's, um, it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, because Ohio State will face off against Central Michigan. Ooh. And of course, Central Michigan pulled off the upset earlier today against LSU. That was an 11 seed taking down a 6 seed. So many games all available on the app. So you will not miss a moment. You will not miss a beat. And I love the game. You know, regardless of gender, the game right now, anybody with the exception of UConn today <laughs> has a shot. I was in awe, 94 points. Y'all, it takes a lot for me to be in awe because I've been through that. I was in awe. I never thought I would see 94 points in one half. And that was quite amazing. They scored more points in the first quarter than St. Francis did the entire game. They had 55 points in the first quarter. They put up 140. And credit to St. Francis because I would not have that any, any part of that. I would have found out in the first five. Wrecking ball. Kathleen Doyle, Kim's Iowa, <laughs> three points. Taking leader. everybody out. <laughs> I love it. So obvious. Back the other way. The answer as Olivia Elger ties it up at 17 all. She shoots 45% from three. No surprise there. Kylie Brown called for the personal foul. And Gustafson is at the line to shoot two. With the Division I Men's Basketball Championship, second round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV for matchups and game times. Make sure you go to NCAA.com. I think the conversation about UMBC, the 16 seed retrievers taking down the number one overall hey, seed. Hey, Tiff, who let the dogs out? Virginia, okay. You couldn't wait for that one, could you? You couldn't wait for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but the conversation, as you were saying, is going to be, I think, in the same light as what Mississippi State did last year, taking down the number one overall seed in UConn. Shout out to Jarius Lyles, because he's hit some big shots time and time again, whether it's in the conference tournament, now against the number one overall seed. Now, my only problem is defense sometimes. I know we got 10 seconds, but when the team relies on defense, sometimes you really need that offense. And they didn't have it. Iowa already with a two-point lead, trying to close out the quarter on top, but Creighton with an opportunity to tie it up. And Jalen Agnew does so. Well, an exciting first quarter here from UCLA as Creighton and Iowa are knotted at 19 apiece. Jalen Agnew leading the way for the Blue Jays with 
eight points. Beautiful lead pass in transition. Jalen Agnew, guess what? 4-2, it's easy. And we're tied up. USF. China Dow had 21 points for Florida Gulf Coast, and they let Sophie Cunningham go off. She had 35 to start for the Tigers, but certainly stingy defense from FGCU. And we have to have a Megan Gusterson of Iowa watch. She's four for five, has 10 points already, so she's on pace for 40, and she leads the NSA in score. Nice note there, programming note if you're just tuning in. She had a Big Ten tournament record. 48 points in their last game against Minnesota. They lost a heartbreaker in the semifinals with four to go on the shot clock. Off balance shot from Sydney Lamberty. And this is an Iowa Hawkeyes team that really had to change things up towards the beginning of the season. As Gustin said, I'm not exactly sure how she even got that shot up and square to the basket, but somehow it falls. Well, the defense did their job. They took away her left side, and she still scored, which means you got to bring the double team. But as we were saying, this Hawkeyes team lost their point guard, and Tanaya Davis, she went down with an ACL injury to her left knee, and she tore her right one on last year. So this was a, a couple of tough years for the point guard, Kathleen Doyle takes over. Conversely, for Creighton, they have a similar instance because they're playing without their point guard in Jade Owens, who suffered a hip and knee injury this season. Megan Gustafson is a lefty. Here's the high-low entry. She jumps on the left side, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Once again, can't stop that. Which means double team. Wouldn't be surprised if the high-low defender came down and doubled for the high-low shot. Let's see if the Blue Jays make the adjustment. Chase Coley looking for Gustinson. Coley got it right back. That, that's the shot you want to force. Sag in, force Coley to shoot. So with Owens out, their point guard, Sydney Lamberty, handling the rock. The senior out of College Grove, Mississippi, and wild shot there from Faber. The first layup won't fall. And Iowa's doing a good job so far snuffing out Creighton's plays. A lot of times they're running half-court sets, and it seems like they know the scouting report, forcing difficult shots. Well, we talked about the familiarity of these two coaches. And so there's a timeout taken on the court as they're checking to see if there's an unsportsmanlike call from that last play. Gustafson took a hit to the head, a shot to the head. To me, I didn't see much. Just the box out. And so what's interesting as we take another look at it, Gustafson underneath the basket, and Allie Green appears to may have gotten her in the face, but it could have been inadvertent as she was perhaps just going for the ball and it was just all in play. It looks inadvertent to me, but still there's contact made to the head. Man, that one's got to hurt. I can just hear my coach in the back of my head saying, Wear your mouth guard. <laughs> Wear your mouth guard for moments <laughs> like that. But you were talking about the coaches. You want to explain why yeah. these coaches are very close? Because just like there was a collision on the court, <laughs> there was also a collision in the streets of Chicago. Tell me about okay. it, Tiff. Here's another look. Here's the collision on the court. Now tell me about this collision in Chicago, because it was pretty interesting to me. It was. The coaches were sharing with us just, you know, their history and their background with one another. And 
Jim Flannery was driving down. I think he may have made a wrong turn mm -hmm. down a one-way street and collided with a cab. I think it was just a fender bender. Yeah. Inadvertent contact. Inadvertent Keep contact. Going. Yes. <laughs> thank you. You're helping my story so much. And I was there. the cab that he hit was carrying Iowa's head coach, Lisa Bluter. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. What a coincidence. coincidence. They, <laughs> they were able to laugh it off, but certainly these two teams – have. As we got the official word, there was no unsportsmanlike penalty, if you will, called on Allie Green. There was inadvertent contact. Inadvertent contact, both on and off, right the, and court off the court for these two teams. <laughs> Tiffany Bird, Timothy Daly, and Daryl Humphrey are officials for today's game. There's a double team because of the last possession, and it forces a travel. Actually, it was a triple team. And so just as you called for that, there in lies an opportunity for Creighton to take the lead here, but also a game plan for perhaps the rest of the game on Gustafson. Now the question is, will someone else knock down threes to force the defense to be honest on Gustafson? And also, will Creighton find their offense again? We talked about the talented trio in Faber, Agnew, and Lamberty. Lamberty needs to get a shot up. Faber takes it with three to go on the shot clock. And there's Lamberty, who's all over the court, a four-year starter for Jim Flannery. And he's called her the X Factor because she really makes the engine go with her energy, and that usually stems from hustle plays like offensive rebounds. A great feed from Agnew over to Allie Green. Stewart, who's been a good body off the bench for the Hawkeyes, gets the bucket. She's a great, yeah, as you mentioned, boost off the bench, and her ability to score on the block also allows Megan to get some rest instead of, you know, getting beat up down there. It's getting physical in the paint. Nice little wraparound pass, keeping the ball high. Easy bucket for Allie Green. These two teams haven't faced off since 2006. I will have the advantage, as they do in the series history, seven to five, one to go on the shot clock. Just letting it go is Elger at short. all game long so far about the familiarity between these two and one of the rare misses for Megan Gustafson. Overload offense. And Creighton has been caught up the last seconds of the shot clock. Agnew, so pretty! And that's what Coach Flannery was talking about. He loves her release. She takes her time, gets set, puts it up. And she's really had to step into a bigger role this year now as a starter. Last year she came off the bench. And she's put up the numbers. And so is Gustafson. She so, continues to add 14 now. So those are the that's a progression of her game. Scores one on one. Scores in the double team, triple team. All right, they're coming. Let me just shoot over the top. Both teams shooting the ball very well, but Jalen Agnew is getting it done. 11 points in the Blue Jays. At least the winner of Texas or Maine, and then Iowa or Creighton will be set to do battle with UCLA on Monday. So many great matchups, all available on the app. And if you notice coming out of break, I don't know if you heard it behind, but the Creighton band was playing the Game of Thrones theme song. I'm just so happy. Both sides, this is us, Game of Thrones. <laughs> These teams, they understand my spirit. 
I'm just tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Olinger out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa with the bucket. Okay, Gonzaga could take it to Stanford. You don't know. Yeah. Although the card. There you go, Lane to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they didn't put me on that game. <laughs> the Cardinal, hey, it's anybody's ball game. Mississippi State, 116. Be careful you, before you get UMBC'd. I'm making all kinds of phrases. That's gonna, yes. I, I, I love how you are creating your own lane. <laughs> But you played with the Hall of Fame head coach and Tara Vanderveer, and let me tell you, the Cardinal will be an excellent scout. The road to the Frozen Four ices up tomorrow with the 2018 NCAA Hockey Selection Special at noon Eastern on ESPN U and the ESPN app, and also visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. California, as you mentioned, is very busy, whether it's in SoCal or NorCal, Stanford, UCLA hosting sites. And the Pac-12 overall has been very busy. They have fared well. Arizona State won. Oregon, how about Sabrina Inescu? Tenth double-double of her career. Oh, triple. Triple double. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, Sabrina is impressive. Even Cal, they lost, and they competed without Christina Nigue. So, back to back. Sydney Liberty dripping with the mess. Yep, he's dripping with finesse from three, 40% from three. And that's the energy she provides you. You see a double dribble called, and it can be a quick, maybe three, five point swing. And for Lisa Bluter, she said, yes, this is a Creighton team who loves to shoot the three ball and they do so exceptionally well. They're shooting about 43% today. They've made six already. It's Faber on the take and Coley says, no ma'am. <laughs> Not today. This is a team, the Iowa Hawkeyes, the force 16 turnovers a game. Now, will they convert off of those to really gain some separation with Creighton? But one of the things Bruder talked about doing, especially on the defensive end, was protecting the three-point line. As Creighton steals it away, Tony Sarda. Seventh turnover now for the Hawkeyes. And even though they've been dropping threes, Jim Flannery says, look, this is a gear that we are actually not as reliant upon the three ball as we have been in years past. And he talks about playing in the Big East, you'll play against a team that will drop 100 points and then a team that really wants you to just drop 50. So they've had to find their niche. They have, they've found their groove. And this is a team that cares about possessions, not points. So as long as they're controlling the possessions, the tempo, that's more likely for a win for them. Flannery. With 11 consecutive postseason appearances, several within the WNIT. They actually won it back in 2004. Fourth NCAA tournament under his watch. And again, this is a team that just snuck in to Ooh, the tournament. That debatable eight. That debatable eight. That was something new that the NCAA committee did. That's tough. That's mean. That's cruel. <laughs> because it's one of those things where you are sitting, and, and, and we talked with the Creighton staff, where you're just sitting and waiting what and hours? wondering. That's more than a 24-hour period before the Selection Monday show came about to figure out if you're going to make it or not. Creighton was happy to be announced among the final teams as an at-large bid. And they lost the, their final few games, and but they really had a good body, a good resume of work. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter how safe you think you're in your head. It's up to the committee. And the ball bounced their way this year. Indeed. And Mackenzie Meyer. With a Doyle and zip pass in to Gustafson, and she couldn't handle it. So a one-point lead with 1.29 remaining here. Right amount of time, half. right amount of time. We'll see who really steals the momentum going into break, because that could be huge for this game. 
And this flow of the game has been back and forth as Timmy Sarda extends the lead out a little bit. We've seen eight ties, five lead changes. I mean, this has been a seesaw battle. And this is what happens when the coaches and the teams know each other very well on both ends. It's like, this, it feels like we're watching a conference game. Mm -hmm. Coach Jim Flannery is one of the most animated guys. I mean, he even jumped into the layup line at one point on pink game. Did a couple side bumps. But off the court, you wouldn't even know that about him. He's really chill, really laid back as Chase Coley getting around Agnew. Giving chase for it is Elder. Welcome in to Los Angeles inside Pauley Pavilion. Creighton, the 11 seed with a one point lead over Iowa. These two teams very familiar with one another. Tiffany Green, Chanea Grimwake here with you. And so far it's come down to the wire, very competitive. Who can stop Megan Gustafson of Iowa? And who can stop the Creighton Blue Jays from their threes? They've dropped six so far this afternoon. The backdoor pass to Sydney Lamberty, and somehow she gets it up and lays it in. Just before the buzzer. And Creighton will trot into the locker room with a three-point lead. This has been a great game here. We'll send it back to the studio and Maria and crew. Need threes for the Blue Jays. Jalen Agnew has led the way for her squad. Dropping 11 points, three or four from beyond the arc, and there's Jalen Agnew once again. So coming out of half, you have to watch out for shooters because they shoot during the break and they're lined up. You really have to get in her face, but she is going to feast as long as there's no defender in front of her. Chase Foley trying to work on Audrey Faber, and Faber collects the foul, her second. This is a... Creighton Blue Jays team that is one of four at-large bids. Jim Flannery said, look, we just snuck into the tournament, but they are playing very well against a, a familiar foe in Iowa, the sixth seed, who they typically meet up with for the last seven or eight seasons in a closed scrimmage before the year starts. They know each other inside and out, and this is a Creighton team that also knows the big stage. They played in six overtime games this year. Six, they understand pressure. They found ways to close out games, much like their Big East counterpart Villanova did against South Dakota State on last night. The Big East currently 3-0 in the tournament, and another trifecta from Jalen Agnew. She's got 16 points this afternoon. Last year's Big East Freshman of the Year. Each season she grows. Now she's all Big East second team. I would not be surprised if next year she's first team and possibly player of the year because she is confident she can score anywhere. That one tipped and blocked. Alexis Civilian gets her own rebound. Here's Kathleen Doyle, rims in and out. And Sydney Lamberty running the point for this Creighton team. They lost their point guard, Jade Owens, at the beginning of the year. She's really been sidelined for the last two and a half years with the hip and knee injury. And so Lamberty has done a great job of filling in the gap and whatever was needed, the senior out of Cottage Grove, Minnesota has filled. And she brings an extra level of competitiveness, some fire. And that one tipped. Here's Lamberty back the other way. Creighton's got numbers. She kicks it all the way at the body of Mackenzie Meyer. And Meyer says, nope. Good defense right there. But let's talk about some offense. Jalen Agnew, defender, is late. Guess what? That's no problem for her. This is a player, as you mentioned, the freshman of the year in the Big East a season ago, averaging seven points this year. She's second on the team in scoring. Nearly doubled that average at better than 14 and a half points 
a game. Single digits on the shot clock. They get in the hands of Agnew. Over to Faber. Faber, ball fake, fades away. And if you're just joining us, Creighton is actually the higher seat. And they really are setting the tempo this second half. Here's Meyer for three. And Meyer is very familiar with the young lady who was guarding her <laughs> and Maya Melman. They were high school teammates and happened to be best friends. You know what I call it in those situations? Best frenemies. <laughs> I, I got a best frenemy when I play in the WNBA. That's my sister. So I understand that sisterhood. That's a nice little luxury to have, wouldn't you say? It is nice, except when they get buckets on you. Your sister does. <laughs> it's not fun at holidays. <laughs> I would love to be there for Thanksgiving dinner. Check this out. Beautiful flare screen at the top of the key. Defender is late. Enough window time. Mackenzie Meyer, three-point assassin, almost at 40% on the season. Bailey Norby, who has gotten offensive-minded here this afternoon. Norby, the senior out of Forest Lake, Minnesota, averaging just about three points a game this afternoon. Norby has already exceeded that total with four and can add one more right here. That's because Creighton relies on the three. She's a post, sometimes a little neglected on this team, but she's an excellent screener, and that's what the posts do for Creighton to get those threes. Welcome in to UCLA. Today, Aguma K. Tiffany Green here with you. And those of you who are just tuning in to Gonzaga Stanford, we say hello from Pauley Pavilion as Creighton with a four point advantage over the six seed Iowa Hawkeyes. Hello, Nerd Nation. Welcome. It's your girl, Chanae. Also, WCC. Gonzaga, good battles with Stanford. Welcome. It's a good, it's a good game. Three point shot versus the NCAA leading score. Creighton with the threes. Megan Gustafson of Iowa with the bucket. Faber just short. Civilian with the rebound. And Creighton did a really good job in adjusting their defense because Gustafson was five of six in the first quarter. She got off to a hot start, but they only limited her to three shots in that second quarter. That's one of her few touches here, and it's really on the O boards. And when they are trying to limit you, I see so many parallels to Gustafson because I played at Stanford, played tri triangle offense. When they try to limit you, you let your teammates shoot. They shoot great shots, and you get active on the boards like she just did, getting to the free throw line. So many ways that she can affect the game, even when she's not getting touches. Second in the NCAA in double doubles. She added another one here this afternoon with 17 points and 13 rebounds. So interesting that she brought up that comparison between you and Megan Gustafson because next to you, she's the only other player in women's basketball to average 24 points and 12 rebounds. But the catch is, the gag is, she's younger than me when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was in your senior season. Yes. This is in her junior season. So can we just imagine what she's going to be like next year? I bet you she will incorporate a three-point shot to her game so no records are safe. The All-American going right at Sydney Lamberty trying to protect the basket, and she picks up the foul. She is obviously leading the NCAA in scoring, almost 26 points per game, also a double-double machine. And you see 27, but let me tell you, in her last game versus Minnesota, 48 points, 15 rebounds. Those are the double-doubles that she brings to the table. I think I don't think I did that. Yeah, but the, <laughs> the more gaudy number to me is the field goal percentage. Almost 70. 73% in that game alone that she's averaging just about 67 on the season. So this is how it works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't <laughs> leave the block, keep shooting and scoring. Gustafson, who is the Big Ten Player of the Year, is voted on by the media. Had a great conference, really. And Chase Coley, who's the lifeline of this Iowa Hawkeye team, 
will go to the line and shoot two. And she was in double figures, I believe, just once last season. She's really emerged more consistently offensively because when you run triangle, you really need a post partner. Coach Tara would always tell me about having a post partner. And she's a good compliment for Megan Gustafson. Coley had a big game, a career high, 24 points against Penn State earlier in the year. And you mentioned she only reached double figures once a season ago, has 10 double digit scoring games this year. Currently with five points. Lamberty working on civilian, keeping her dribble. The reverse move, the spin around, and Sydney Lamberty with the and one. And that is why Coach Jim Flannery says she is the X Factor. She keeps her dribble alive, reads the defense, spins, turns, and one, son. Fired up about it. That is your heartbeat. Takes the contact, wants it more. Every possession matters. Does not settle for a miss or a free throw, wants it all. In addition to her being the heartbeat of this team, is the fact that she's kind of been a yo-yo at the guard position, right? So she has gone between point guard and wing, and wherever she's been needed, she's stepped into that role. We mentioned their point guard for the Blue Jays went down. Sydney Lamberty raised her hand and said, I can fill that. I can do that. Stolen away by Kathleen Doyle. One on two. She goes right in. And Elger thinking she was may she maybe had position instead. Elger is called for the foul. That's her first personal for team foul as Doyle will get a couple from the charity strike. We well, want to check in the Sports Center tonight after boxing on ESPN with John Anderson and Kenny Mayne. They'll have updates from Portland as the Trail Blazers try to extend their win streak to 12. Dame Plus Dalla. News on LeBron and the Cavs. And which Sweet 16 teams have impressed you the most? Sports Center at 11 p.m. Eastern on the ESPN app and on ESPN. So many great things happen on the app. Everything, not even so many great things, everything's on the app. <laughs> Games from the NCAA, men's and women's, NBA action, all sports. You have a question where a game is, just go to the app. Yeah, the Wrestling Championships. Make it simple. As well. right. yeah. You name it. So simple. Today, what teams thus far have impressed you in the tournament as Agnew has five working on the shot clock to take the right hand, the bucket. So back-to-back -back possessions where we see Creighton literally flexing, whether it's Cindy Lamberty or Jalen Agnew. Jalen Agnew, once again, last year, she's the freshman player of the year for the conference. This time, she's all Big East performer, and she's trying to keep Creighton's lead. Known each other and their staffs over the time, and they could really just get on a bus and ride four hours <laughs> one way or the other to face off against each other. Instead, they come out here. <laughs> to the West Coast. To the West Coast. <laughs> they leave Iowa City. They leave Lincoln. And they play with everything on the line. And you asked me a great question, Tiffany. Which teams have impressed sorry, you so far? Mind. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, which teams? <laughs> Obviously, the first answer is UConn. Right. They're sort of like, okay, after last year, y'all thought I was finished? Nope. I'm going to put you on notice. We're not going to get UMBC. <laughs> Texas A&M, Kennedy Carter, she's something special. I saw that in and out on one hand. She said Kyrie inspired her. Pretty impressive. And then also Oregon. I mean, how many times do we see someone enter the NCAA tournament, Sabrina Inescu, with a triple-double, with a trip up? So many different teams. And obviously, Monique Bones is in there uh, putting her team on her back playing dominant basketball today that we got to witness front row and center here in Poly. And good news for one of these teams. I don't know if they'll see it as good news, but certainly a chance to advance to the round of 32. Either Creighton or Iowa will face off against the Bruins on Monday. And Creighton looks to have controlled the tempo so far for most of, most of this game. Now, Megan Gustafson, she's been effective early, but since there's really been an answer for her. Forcing others to step up and shoot. Yeah, she's only knocked down two three free throws. She's still without a field goal here in this third quarter. And when you are the NCAA leading scorer, 
at 25 and some change per game. Watch how Creighton's defense just gravitates toward her like a black hole. And Chase Coley with the wraparound using the left hand. The senior is coming off a very strong February where this team performed exceptionally well. She had 13 points and six rebounds as the Hawkeyes went 7-0 last month. And for Chase Coley, less is almost more. She shoots the high percentage, 50%, but she only shoots when she really needs to to keep the defense honest for Emily Gustafson. Or Megan Gustafson, excuse me. Elgin putting on the moves. Gustafson with her 14th board of the game. Can't stop it. She's looking for a basket. She's a lefty. You sat on the left hand, but she's bigger, stronger, and she's a professional at getting that off in single coverage. Well, if ever Megan Gustafson went under the radar at any point this season, which clearly was very difficult to do, and I don't think she did, she will put everyone on notice for next year. Her senior season, she will be fun to watch as Lamberty has to get up a shot. And somehow, Timmy Sarter gets it to go in. And that's what Coach Jim talks about. You know, just her ability to create something out of nothing. Her ability to keep her defense, uh, the defense honest, by going off the dribble, keeping the dribble alive, being aware, one second of shot clock, nails it. And that's Timmy Sarda. And she's matched her season average of seven points. And they're checking to see whether the shot is good based on the low shot clock. Just when we get on a roll. <laughs> Hurry up, wait. There's a quick stoppage in play, and from here, it looks like, yes, she got it off for sure, with about more than a second to go. Creighton in full control, honestly. And Coach Jim Flannery pointed this out. When Megan Gustafson has a big game, doesn't necessarily mean that Iowa wins. So they're playing a little bit of, okay, we let you go early. Now we're going to tamper down on everyone else, hunker down on everyone else. Now she'll get going again. We'll see how they manage that, that, that defensive. That's versatility on defense. Right. So Creighton is doing their job, but also Lisa Bruno talked about the need for other players to step up. Who is going to compliment Gustafson? Because everyone knows that she's going to get the ball. That is the point of interest for the Hawkeyes. But who around her is going to be able to step up? Kathleen Doyle, she's not necessarily a shooter, but she has made a couple threes. Mackenzie Meyer is a three-point shooter. Chase Coley's doing her job. Now, Alexis Sizilian, she's someone that they need. She started the year hot, sort of cooled off. If she can get going late, it would be a good boost for Iowa. Lamberty called for her second personal foul as Mackenzie Meyer will go to the line. Meyer, who missed six games during the season with a broken bone in her non-shooting hand. And before the game, and you'll see it on the bench too, the Iowa players wearing warm-up jerseys and shirts that say grit. And so when we talked with Lisa Bruder, you know, what characterized this team this year? She said, absolutely grit and resiliency. We also talk about winning, working hard with integrity and no excuses. Work, integrity, no excuses. We'll see if that comes through down to the wire. An offensive foul called on Audrey Faber. That's her third. So Creighton was rolling when there was no stoppage of play. Now that there's stoppage of play, it honestly works towards Iowa's benefit. They set up their offense. They find Gustafson, get good looks. And Meyer may have touched the inline. 
And that is the call, so the Blue Jays get the ball right back. So 12, excuse me, 12 turnovers now for the Hawkeyes. Jalen <laughs> Agnew, oh my, what an exciting player to watch. You talked about showing her muscle earlier in the game. That was something that Jim Flannery said she needed to put on more of from freshman <laughs> to sophomore year. She is such a versatile scorer, off the dribble, spotting up, crafty, at the rim, behind the three-point line. She could be on a starter on any top team in the country. And you see the hops for Agnew was a high jumper in high school. And she's really helped to carry the load this afternoon. She's got a team high 20 points. Again, working it deep into the shot clock again as Agnew and Doyle collide. Jalen Agnew, she is the best three-point shooter, made the most on her team, but that's a two. Keeping the defense honest, off the dribble, she's excellent creating her own shot, but also, she does not care if you challenge her at the rim. This Creighton group, averaging 70 points a game, shooting 38% from beyond the arc. And a very complete game for, by Agnew. If you saw the stat, eight for 11 from the field. It's been at the rim, mid-range, off the dribble, spot threes, off the dribble threes, doing it all. Foley face up against Faber and just loses it. And that's why coach says don't dribble too much when you're in the paint. Coley will check out and go to the bench, and what Creighton's defense has done this third quarter is effectively take Megan Gustafson out of this game thus far. Here come the Hawkeyes. Maya asking for it. three, won't fall. Nice rebound from Hannah Stewart, kept alive by Meyer. Good hustle play, and Doyle is fouled. Doyle is such a competitor. You saw her running the break, kicking it to her teammate, good three, work to keep the play alive, and then attack the rim. The emotion is there because this game matters most. Loser go home, there's the hustle. Got lucky, make it count, that's her left hand. Sorry, uh, rim, backboard, <laughs> that one had to hurt. Doyle, the Illinois native, is a sophomore captain for this team. And what a year she's had. Second team, all Big Ten selection, first of her career. And she's just one of those players that you want to compete with. She works hard on both ends, will not be the fastest, will not shoot the best, but she works one of the hardest. She's one of those players that strong comparisons to Samantha Logic, a former point guard, for here just because of the way that she can make shots when need be. She assists exceptionally well, top 15 in the nation in assists per game. So a nice building block for Lisa Bluter in the future as Sydney Lamberty with the reverse layup. Just one of those days. One of those days. Use the rim as your protection. Meyer, full speed ahead, back the other way. Faber blocked it. He said the speed was slow. We've turned it all the way up here in Cali. The Hawkeyes still have 4.1 seconds to go. As Hannah Stewart left wide open and makes the Blue Jays pay. Players that may be nervous, but still performing. That's what Monique told us. There were some nerves, there was some rust, but that's not stopping them from getting buckets. Eight of nine was Hobbs from three-point range. That's gotta be the performance of the day. Yeah, for sure. And Jalen Agnew is following up four of five from beyond the arc. So the sophomore is having herself a ball game with 22 points as Gustinson, a rare miss on the offensive end. And we've seen her offensive production go down, 10 points in the first quarter, and then 10 points in the last two periods. 
That's how good she is. Twenty points, fourteen rebounds, and still barely got a few touches in the third. Yeah. We'll see if they put a greater emphasis on trying to get her the ball. And there's a triangle action once again. Gustafson's doing work. She wants the ball inside. So then what is it that Creighton is doing to keep her off balance or the ball out of her hands? So you have to sag in to create her, make sure she's uncomfortable. But in return, you have to knock down those corner threes or wing threes so that the defense spaces out and allows her to work. You mean threes like on the other end from Audrey Faber. Faber out of Clive, Iowa, the leading scorer for this team. So the big question for this matchup, Iowa, Megan Gustafson, twos versus Creighton, threes. So far, Creighton is winning even though Gustafson goes and one. Now here is what Creighton's bread and butter is. And the biggest challenge, stopping the three-point shot. That's Iowa's biggest challenge. Now Iowa's biggest strength, right here, in isolation, going to her strong hand, getting emotional, because they're down and they need a push. We'll see if that can energize this Hawkeyes group as they trail by six. Green thought about it, decided to take their time within their half court set. And then off of Green's foot as she tries to follow her shot. And you see the three point shots, but what you probably don't see is that Creighton, they run a motion offense. And it's always moving, similar to what we saw earlier with American. Hard to defend because everyone's moving and everyone is a shooter. And that one rejected. was rejected by Faber. She got a piece of that one, swatting it out of bounds. Shot goes up. Not today, Dikembe. <laughs> You're just having too much fun. You don't always do. <laughs> got to do it for the kids. I thought they did it for the Vine, but that's that's like Vine, oh, you, you, Did they didn't tell like, you Vine's dead? I know it's dead, but I'm just saying. <laughs> that was that was the saying. As Doyle puts it up, low on the shot clock, no good. You know, when you watch this Creighton team, just a very steady offense. I mean, they're among the top 25 in several statistical categories, and among those leaders, you know, they do a great job at three-point percentage, three-pointers made, free throws. They hold on to the basketball and take care of it. Assisted turnover, but three seconds to go on the shot clock. Doyle working on Agnew just hits the front of the rim. And Green corrals the offensive board. And Gustafson called for over the back. If you watch Jalen Agnew that last possession, yes, she had to force up the shot and she missed, but she almost pulled a James Harden with the stutter step, <laughs> push off. That'll be in her game next year. And you see a lot of bodies hitting the deck. A lot of blue jerseys. And fourth personal on Meyer. Motion offense, one option was denied, but it still moves on the backside. And left wide open is Audrey Faber. She had a good look, just couldn't connect. Civilian working on that right side, trying to get it down to Gustafson. Nice move inside, left hand finish. Once again, she's left dominant and she was smart, the help defense was coming, but she brought the ball over to protect herself and got a good look at the rim. The All-American now with 25 points and she brings her team within four. And everyone's standing in Iowa, Iowa fans. And that high, and now they sit down. the Iowa City <laughs> contingency as Sydney Lamberty knocks down the three. One bucket and they all stand next bucket.
gets the fans back in their seat. Megan Gustafson working down low in that triangle. Left hand, strong hand. Left side, strong side. And here's the answer. Here's the three. As Creighton tries to face UCLA again. They faced off earlier in the season back in the non-conference on November 25th. At the time, UCLA was ranked fifth in the country. And even though the Blue Jays walked away with an L, as Gustafson is keeping the Hawkeyes right in this ball game, always in striking distance when you have an All-American like that. And she was in single coverage. She could have gone up with her left hand, but she did the next level counter move, came back to her right and finished it. And that's a part of her game that, you know, Lisa Bruder talked about her working on, being able to be more effective from the right, seeing that she is a natural lefty. It's funny, as a player, I love my right hand. I would use it most of the time, but you had to keep them honest and go there once or twice. Good time. Fade away, shot clock winding down. Again, Sydney Lamberty coming through. X factor, clutch factor, that's Sydney Lamberty. Sid Lamb. 16 points now for the senior. And now we know the winner faces UCLA. And regardless of who wins this game, you got to make buckets. Look at that, drifting to the left. Beautiful release. Big time shot. Hannah Stewart answering with a baseline jumper on the other end. And in my head, I'm thinking, who would be the better matchup for UCLA at this point? I'm here for the post battle of Monique Billings and Megan Gustafson. But I'm also here for the three point shootout and seeing what UCLA's defense would do to Creighton. And Jalen Edmund. So it's win win for all of us. Kathleen Doyle getting strong on the defensive end. Hawkeyes trying to come back. The NCAA. 9 Eastern. Or the app. Or the app. There's always options. Also, another Pac-12 team and Arizona State will likely face Texas if they hold on to their lead against Maine. And Sydney Lamberty right into the teeth of the Iowa defense with the and one. Executing out of timeouts. And that one got Coach Jim Flannery out of his seat. Now, Sydney Lamberty, she's 5'10", but she can really be like 5'9" takes the contact in the paint with the trees and finishes. 18 points, seven for 11 from the field. Impressive work. Both she and Jalen Agnew have now combined for 40 points. And a Stewart kissing it off the backboard. Well, that was a big shot there from Stewart. If you're gonna try to come back in this one, you've got to be able to convert on the offensive end and then come up with the stop on the defensive end. And I think Coach Lisa Bluter subbed in Hannah Stewart because she's just aggressive on the block, and that's what she wanted, someone who will do it by any means necessary. There's Gustafson falling to the floor as she corrals the rebound. And here come the Hawkeyes. Overload. They go back to Stewart. This one rims out. Jalen Agnew saving it. And the Blue Jays operating in the half court. Trying to get Sydney Lambert to the ball. But nice counter read by Jalen Agnew. So in that instance, when you realize everyone has cleared out, instead, Alexis Civilian should have forced her to the left where her help defense is. Instead, she fouled. Jays seemingly have done, especially within the second half, is really 
utilize the shot clock, milk it down to under single digits, really look for the shot that they want, just like they did right there. And the bunny from Alley Green that couldn't convert. And it's not just utilizing the shot clock, it's moving and utilizing. Everyone is moving hard to defend for 20 or so seconds. In the gust of sin. Just dribbles out and stays with the Hawkeyes. They've got a fresh shot clock and 2.30 to go. This is where you want to get the ball in Gustafson's hands. There's a replay afterwards. Not sure. Looks like the 50 50 ball. Almost 50 -50. Gone. Yeah. Charlie Moans with the drive. Right read from Moans. He's green with the personal. That's her fourth. I mean, trusting the game plan, Creighton only has two fouls as opposed to Iowa's four. So they can foul if necessary down the stretch. In this first round game from Pauley Pavilion, a chance to move on and play UCLA. The winner from this site will go on to Kansas City. The Sweet 16, the number one overall seed in this bracket is Mississippi State. Bulldogs took care of Nickel State. And that was an empty possession that the Hawkeyes wish they could come back with. And they were trying to get Megan Gustafson the ball, but too much congestion, and you have to have a shooter feeding her the ball because they sobbed off of Carly Bones. a very patient offense and off the roll and lets it in. Cindy Lamberty lays it in. What an afternoon she's having. 20 points now for the senior. And that was what Creighton does as their bread and butter. They do it in warm-ups, they do it in practice. They do. She just wouldn't talk on the court. She wouldn't, she wouldn't say much. And he said, I had to learn how to better coach her. But he said she's just a player that is steady under pressure. And highly competitive. And a big three back the other way by Kathleen Doyle. That cuts the lead to four. And if we're talking about X factors, competitive, steady under pressure, not necessarily a shooter, but when the big shots need to happen, Kathleen Doyle is not afraid of them. Two possession game. Need a stop if you're Iowa. Need a good possession if you're Creighton. Jalen Agnew posting up on Meyer. Meyer, who has four fouls, the turnaround and punched away. It was a foul on the floor, and Meyer with her fifth foul. Well, welcome in to Pauley Pavilion as this one is coming down to the wire between Creighton and Iowa. Under a minute to go here, and Mackenzie Meyer just fouled out that sends. Allie Green to the free throw line, 11 versus 6 seed. The winner of this one will advance on Monday to play UCLA. And the Bruins took down American University out of the Patriot League. <laughs> to move to the round of 60, excuse me, 32. And we are definitely on upset watch. Under a minute to go, and Creighton has been cool, calm, collected from the tip. You would have thought they were probably the 60. Jim Flannery said this team, they just do what they do. They're, they're not gonna perhaps wow you, although they had some solid play with 22 points, 8 of 14 from the floor. Has played 37 minutes, and I'm telling you, these are minute warriors if you're talking about Creighton's group. And that one was partially blocked. There's high jumping skills coming into play for Agnew. And Lamberty getting around Doyle. 
And with a six point lead, the Hawkeyes must foul, and there's Stewart. And it's foul and catch up, and this has been, if it continues to be a likely win for Creighton, a big win because they're going up against the NCAA's leading scorer in Megan Gustafson. We've already seen some 11 seeds upset six seeds today. And Buffalo taking down USF. How about the Chippewas of Central Michigan handing it to LSU? And that extends the lead to eight for the Creighton Blue Jays. The folks out of Omaha are feeling good right now. Play of Jalen Agnew and Sidney Lamberty. And the big question overall for this matchup, twos versus threes. Megan Gustafson's twos. She has the ball right now, leading score in the NCAA. Quick two versus Creighton's threes, and Creighton has won that gamble so far. And a quick foul from Amanda Olinger. So free throws, all the more important here down the stretch. Creighton standing at 77% from the charity stripe. As Olivia Elger out of Peoria, Illinois, will shoot two. And she hits one of two. But last touch by Iowa. And wow, is that one big. So I had the eyeball test on this last possession. I believe it was touched off of Creighton, but it looks like it's actually, let's see here. Let's see, it's Ooh. both Doyle and Elger going for it. That one's tough. From that angle, it's really that's tough impossible. to see. <laughs> Let's see if we can. See, that's where I thought. I See, I thought it was batted out by Doyle right there, which is the call on the floor. His last touch by the Hawkeyes. I thought it was Olivia Elder of Creighton. She looks shocked. <laughs> She's already selling it. Well, it's a whoever gets the ball, it's a big possession because you can take it from a two possession game to a three possession game. Or if you're Iowa, you can bring it down to a one possession game with 33 seconds left. So if you're in the huddle with Jim Flannery and you're thinking like a coach, what's he saying to his group? Stay calm, take care of the ball, force a tough shot. We can live if they make it. Do not foul on the shot, play solid defense. And if we get the ball back, Run a good set, eat up the clock, get get the ball to your best free throw shooter. Whoever gets the ball right now should be your best free throw shooter because they're gonna foul. Now, on the other hand, Iowa, it's Creighton's ball. Iowa, you need to get a defensive possession, get a steal right here, or quickly foul. 33 seconds remaining. Seven points separate these two teams. And quickly, Hannah Stewart. Miles Audrey Faber. Faber is an 82% free throw shooter. That's exactly what you need to do. There was a screen. It was either Jalen Agnew or Audrey Faber. Good free throw shooters. More importantly for Iowa, only one second ran off the clock. Exactly. Still two possessions. And if you're Iowa, who's going to take that big shot? You mentioned already. Alexis Civilian can knock down the big three. Kathleen Doyle, we've seen her drop a three ball as well. Back here at Pauley, 32 seconds remaining as they heave it in to Gustafson. Kathleen Doyle takes the three. No good, the put back is true. Still plenty of time. They've got to foul. 
A civilian running up the court with Agnew, and they're trying to just play tough defense. And Kathleen Doyle is really just giving it literally everything she has. The sophomore with some gutsy play here. And good for Doyle. She's arguing her case, saying, check the monitor. See whose ball this really is. Now, she could have just bought herself inadvertently a timeout, a reset. Smart girl. Lindsay play from the sophomore captain out of LaGrange Park, Illinois. And so they're taking a look to see who was the last touch by. The last one went in favor of the Blue Jays. And it's hard to see if either Lamberty or Doyle last had their hands on it. Ooh, I think it could be Lamberty. Her handle on, was on the ball a little bit longer, but who knows? Yeah, that was another kind of 50-50 call. Doyle was involved in that last one that went in favor of Creighton here. Again, all the more important six point lead for Creighton and the Blue Jays retain possession. So the call stands on the court with 19.1 seconds to go. Everyone on the court for Creighton is a decent free throw shooter. Blue Jays led the Big East in free throws and a timeout has to be taken as Sydney Lamberty Boy, what terrific games we have seen. Ohio, and then the season ends in Ohio. And not only are there great games, great teams, but they're big time performers. And civilian called for the foul, and that's really unfortunate for Iowa. Not only is it her fifth personal foul, but also because it seemed like Creighton didn't have anywhere to go and they were going to get that five second call. Very unfortunate. And I think Alexis Civilian tried to plead her case. <laughs> Correction. Uh, Civilian only had four fouls. And scoring from everywhere on the floor. Cool, calm, collected, reading the defense. Those two have really paced the game for the Blue Jays. So they need a quick three. And instead, well, the time will wind down here for the Iowa Hawkeyes as Doyle lets it fly. Oh, what a season it's been for the Hawkeyes tied for third and a finish in the Big Ten standings. Their seniors and Chase Coley and Carly Moans. Only two players on this team that have actually played in an NCAA tournament. And they end their careers here in LA. And Megan Gustafson, what a season for her. 25 and a half points per game, 12 rebounds per game. And she's just a junior, so next year, the bar has been raised. And for the first time since 2011, the Big East has gone 4-0 in the first round as Creighton defeats Iowa 76-70. to Your final thoughts, Shanae? The NCAA leading scorer, her season comes to an end, but Iowa, strong season for them in general, and Creighton, the three ball was good to them. And they will face off against UCLA on Monday. Meanwhile, Arizona State will take on Texas. Some great action coming your way. It's the NCAA Wrestling Championships. We say so long from Los Angeles.